and you need to go in four fingers deep to really extend the legs. I, I realize what I said and I would appreciate it if you guys don't repeat it in the comments. And what Peak Design suggested is kind of going alternating hands. God, this sounds so dirty. So by now, you've probably heard that Peak Design is coming out with a tripod. But if you're just hearing it for the first time on my channel, well, I am very honored that you've heard it first on my channel. So in this video, we're gonna go over who is this tripod for? What's my travel experience with this tripod? What you can expect when you receive your very own travel tripod? And which one should you get? Carbon fiber or aluminum? Full disclosure, Peak Design did fly me out to San Francisco for the unveiling of the Travel Tripod, and they did give this to me for testing purposes. However, I'll still be incredibly honest about this tripod in this video. With that said, there is an affiliate link in the description box below for you to pre-order this tripod. A small kickback of that money will come back to my channel to help me keep on making more helpful content for you guys. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into who is this tripod for? If you are a photographer looking for a lightweight tripod for long exposures, for time lapses, especially if you're out traveling, I think this is it. This is super lightweight, this is super compact. I think you would dig it a lot. However, if you shoot a lot of sports, a lot of wildlife, you know, things that require a 400 millimeter prime lens, a 500 millimeter prime lens, a 600 millimeter prime lens, I'm, I'm not too quite sure about that. Peak Design did advertise this tripod to be able to hold a full DSLR setup with a telephoto, uh, with a telephoto zoom lens, like a Canon 5D Mark IV with a 70 200. Now here's my setup with the Sony a7 III and the 70 200 G Master, and it's handling pretty fine. I've also had two cameras set as with two big 85s on it, and it's uh, doing its job. Also, what I really like about this tripod is that not only can you shoot in landscape mode, but you can also shoot in portrait mode, check this out, boom. But what about video shooters? Now clearly right here you see this is not a fluid head. So at best this would be great for walked off shots, which I personally do. I have the camera sit stationary and let the motion kind of happen within the frame. Now for any sort of panning or tilting shot, I would put a gimbal on top of these tripods and just use the joystick to control the camera movement. However, if you want to, you can attach a fluid head on top of the Peak Design Travel Tripod. As you can see, there's a bit of a gap on the tripod, but I'll go ahead and show you a clip of it being in action so you can see how stable it is for yourself. Now, I do want to clarify that this is a first impressions video. This is not a full review of the Peak Design Travel Tripod. I've only used it for a couple of days, so that doesn't really warrant a full review. But I'll continually keep testing out this tripod. If you're interested in following my journey with the Peak Design Travel Tripod, follow me on my Instagram where I post daily stories and Instagram post and likely there will be updates in the very near future of me using this tripod. All right, so here's my experience whenever I travel with tripods. I usually bring my Manfrotto B3 and I put it in my luggage. That way I don't have to carry this extra weight on my back when I'm going on the plane. Now, this is short enough to fit in the luggage. However, you do see a lot of empty gaps in between the tripod legs right here. So I had to like wrap my socks and my underwears just to fill up space in my luggage, just so I can pack a little bit more in that suitcase. But when I was flying back from San Francisco with the Peak Design tripod in my luggage, there was a huge difference in the amount of space that this took up. And this is what my backpack setup looks like while I was traveling in Japan with the Manfrotto tripod on the side. <gasps> That's not a Peak Design backpack. I know, I know, the Peak Design Everyday Backpack is my favorite go-to backpack for every day. But when I'm traveling with two camera setups and eight freaking lenses, the Think Tank backpack here holds a little bit more. But anyways, the reason why I want to bring up this side pocket setup right here is because this has a pretty wide width, so it was hard, and it is still kind of hard, to put it into the side pocket of the Think Tank backpack. However, with the Peak Design tripod, it just goes right in, and let me secure it really quickly, and boom, this is what it looks like. This is something that I wish I had for my Japan trip. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about what you can expect when you receive your travel tripod. So I don't believe the packaging is finalized yet, but this is what they gave me, this little black tubular poster kind of box. And you can see the Peak Design logo on it, as well as the specification of what this tripod is. And when you crack this baby open, you're gonna get your tripod 
with a travel pouch. Now the travel pouch that I have right here sucks. It's awful. It is super hard to take out this tripod. As you can see, I'm like clearly struggling right now. No emphasis. This is what it was like trying, oh. <laughs> this is literally what it felt like when I was trying to take this tripod at a wedding that I was shooting at. But don't worry about this pouch when you get it because Peak Design realized this is bad too. So when you get yours, it will be entirely different from what I have right here. I believe they're gonna be going for a zipper design. You'll see here, there are little anchors here that you can put your Peak Design anchors on and throw a strap on so you can carry this on your shoulders. And Peak Design pretty much are the masters at having hidden areas, hidden little tiny pockets. Inside here, it's kind of hard to tell, but there's a little pocket that stores an Allen wrench, which I will show you what this is for later. So one of the important things for um, quickly setting up this tripod is that you'll see these four levers right here, and you need to go in four fingers deep to really extend the legs. I, I realize what I said, and I would appreciate it if you guys don't repeat it in the comments. But anyways, yes, use your four fingers right here to pull on the lever. <laughs> you really need to, you just gotta really extend it out. You gotta pull on the legs, make sure they're fully extended. And what Peak Design suggested is kinda going alternating hands God, this sounds so dirty. Going alternating hands and just closing on the legs right here. So you would hold it right here, move. I don't wanna hit any sort of fire, I mean, uh, sprinklers right here, but yeah, um, just kind of twist it. As you can see, I'm still getting used to this whole thing right here, but once you master it, pretty much you can get this tripod set up really, really quickly. And you probably might have saw from the promo, but there's a secret compartment here on the bottom that holds a phone holder so you can use the tripod with your phone as well. The only gripe about this whole secret compartment for your phone holder is that this thing is, oh, I got it this time. It's kind of finicky when you're trying to mess with it for the first couple of times. Uh, for this particular take that we had to get for this B-roll, it took me so many tries, uh, so many tries before I got it, but it's still a little finicky, so just a heads up on that, and now I can put it back. So another minor complaint that I have with this tripod is that this little level bubble meter right here, it does get blocked if you have a camera set up uh, mounted to the tripod. As you can see right here, you can't really see it anymore. So if you're trying to relocate your tripod and camera set up somewhere else and you need to have, have it level, it's gonna be hard to see that bubble. Luckily for me, uh, my Sony a7 III has the level meter on the screen, so it helps me out a little bit. But if your camera doesn't have that, that might be an issue for you. You just have to take off the tripod to see if the tripod setup is balanced or not. Now, Peak Design also mentioned that it's compatible with their Pro Plate, but it's only gonna work on one side. So I usually mount my camera where the lens is facing out this way and the back of the camera is um, where the lever is at. But because of how this Pro Plate is designed, I can only mount it kind of sideways like this. So it's a little different. The lever is gonna be to the side of the camera if I need to detach it when I'm using it with the Pro Plate. Now I should also mention, if you do end up using the Peak Design Pro Plate for whatever reason, I would highly recommend that you remove these two little nubs right here so that it can slot into the quick release right here much more easier. So to do that, you use the provided Allen wrench to the side of the, to the, side of the Peak Design tripod pouch and you just kind of loosen it and take it out. But once they're off, super easy to throw in the pro plate and just lock it down and boom, ready to rock and roll. And lastly, I do want to mention that after two days of heavy usage of the Peak Design tripod, I did notice um, a few wear. I mean, I, these are normal. I've always like bang up and scratch up my tripods anyway. I've actually had this drop from my cart when I was transporting it. So I got this little nick right here on the lever that's breaking my heart right now. But I feel like that was important to bring up just because I know there'll be people who will baby this tripod, especially for the price that they're paying for. But it's bound to happen. These battle scars are bound to happen. And you just really gotta put them through its paces to get the shot that you want. So let's go ahead and talk about the pricing and which version of these tripods you should get. 
So there's an option for carbon fiber and there's an option for aluminum. Now, anything that's carbon fiber is gonna be lighter than the aluminum version and also a lot more expensive. So for the carbon fiber version of the travel tripod, you can expect to pay $599, whereas the aluminum will run you about $349. The reason for the high price tag for these tripods is because of all the research and development that went into developing this tripod right here. In terms of trying to find something similar in the market at this moment in time that is this slim and this light and this compact travel friendly, you're really not gonna find anything out there. The one I have right here is carbon fiber and you can tell from the texture on the screen. The texture on the Manfrotto right here doesn't have that same pattern, so this is aluminum. The carbon fiber version of anything is pretty much just lighter than the aluminum version, but just as stable. If you can find a way to justify spending the extra $250 for the carbon fiber version of this tripod, I honestly would recommend going for it just because even though the amount of weight difference between this and the aluminum is just less than a pound, uh, when it comes to traveling, when, when it comes to just packing your suitcase or your gear, shaving that extra pound may seem a little silly, but when you add everything together, it's gonna save you a lot of back pain and potentially save you some money, especially if you need to check in anything heavy um, for your flight. So when can you expect to get this in your hands? Now, Peak Design have successfully funded a lot of projects on Kickstarter, so they're very good at getting products into people's hands. So if you're one of the first people to pre-order this, the first batch of people to pre-order this tripod, you should be able to get it by the end of this year assuming everything goes according to plan. But again, unlike other Kickstarter projects, Peak Design is very good at fulfilling orders to their backers. So you will see this tripod. If you're not one of the first people to get it, you'll probably get it early 2020. And by the way, I'll be extra active in the comment section of this video until the end of the Kickstarter campaign, just so I can help you guys out to see if this tripod is right for you. Again, I have an affiliate link in the description box below if you're interested in pre-ordering this tripod and supporting my channel, just because you found this video helpful and you find the other content on my channel helpful as well. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.